quick tutorial on how to unbrick your VESC. You need an ST link. Any of those seem to work. Supposedly some of the clones are shitty, but I haven't had any problems with them. So just pick any one and uh, cross your fingers. Or if you don't want to take chances, just order the proper one from ST. And then go to customwheel.shop and click on one of these guys and then scroll down until you see this picture and that shows you the pins that you need to connect to. So that's what we're going to do now. So this is what it looks like on the ST-Link. There is five pins that you need. Starting with the top left, we need reset, then we need clock, we need IO, then ground, and 3.3 volts. So those are the ones that I have connected here. And just make sure you connect to the right side. And then you connect it to your VESC again. Make sure you cross-reference that diagram from customwheel.shop. And that'll be it. So you have those five wires connected, and now you can plug it into your PC. Now when you plug it into your PC, you should see the board booting, the VESC booting, meaning you don't need external power. I don't have my battery connected right here. So it is just powered by the red wire, the 3.3 volts. And uh, as you may have noticed, my red and yellow are flipped from before because I got it wrong once again. So uh, make sure that you uh, check the orientation of the diagram versus your VESC. And uh, yeah, triple check where you're plugging those wires in. All right, now on the PC. I'm using the STM32 ST-Link utility. Supposedly it's been replaced, but I'm still using this one. You can still get it. Here is the link. I'll also put it into the description. So you download it, install it, and once you've finished installing it, you should run it, obviously. And this here is the ST-Link utility. We can look at the device manager to see where the device shows up. So for me, it shows up under USB devices, STM32, ST-Link. So now in the ST-Link utility, we go to Target and Settings. And here it should find an ST-Link. There should be something here. Then it should show a firmware version. It may give you an opportunity to update the firmware. If it does, do it. Update the firmware. And key here is if all your wires are connected properly, it will recognize the target. So if you have your, wire, your wires flipped, it will show nothing here. I'm, I'm not sure, something, it will not give you the name. And um, that is pretty much a clear sign that you don't have them connected properly. Like I had before when I had the red and yellow wires flipped. So, this is it, we connect. So now, if you have downloaded a release from my GitHub, you can go and open that zip file and uh, unpack the file that you need. So for Little Fokker V3, make sure you take the V3 version, not this one, that's for the original one. So here V3 and then VESC default.bin. Yes, all the files are called vestdefault.bin, so make extra sure that you picked the right one. So I'll just copy that to my downloads. And then from the utility, I'll go into File, Open File, vestdefault.bin. And 
now you can hit the download button here program and verify it shows you again the file name you're going to download it will verify so that takes just a few seconds and when that's done you should see here verification OK and that is it your board should now be restored and um, you should be able to put it together again if you now see a red light blinking or something like that on your on your um, VESC don't worry about it that's probably because of the low voltage if you don't have an external power source the 3.3 volts are obviously not enough to power the VESC properly but it was enough to download the firmware so now you can put it all back together again but if you want to you can already connect to it over Bluetooth or USB. You can verify before you put everything back together, you can verify that it's working, but I'm not gonna show you that part, obviously. So that is it. Good luck.